Hi. Now, in an earlier tutorial, I showed you that if we had two particles and they collided, that we could use the conservation of linear momentum. In other words, the total momentum before impact equaled the total momentum of the particles after impact, providing no external forces acted on the system. Now in this video what I want to do is introduce you to another equation that we can use in collisions and this will enable us to work out a lot more. And this particular equation is known as Newton's experimental law or Newton's law of restitution. Now the coefficient of restitution given by the letter E is a value that compares the speed of separation of the two particles with the speed of approach of the two particles. And both these quantities are always positive. E has no units. What it does is it depends entirely on the type of material that the particles are made of and their relative speeds to one another in a collision. I'll show you more on this uh, as we go through the tutorial. But for now, suppose we had two particles which were perfectly elastic. Okay, If their two particles are perfectly elastic, then E turns out to be 1. Before they collide, let's suppose they're moving towards one another in opposite directions with a speed of V. After the impact, they would move in opposite directions to one another, also with a speed of v. Then there comes the other scenario where our two particles are inelastic, say like two lumps of plasticine. If that's the case, then what happens when they approach one another with speeds of v? As soon as they collide with one another, they stick together, they coalesce. And so the two particles remain at rest. And in this particular situation, the coefficient of restitution turns out to be zero. So the coefficient of restitution between two particles takes on a value, a positive value, which is greater than or equal to zero or less than or equal to one. Now what I want to do is give you a few examples. We'll run through two of them and I'll leave you with this third example to try. But what I've got here are two particles. We've got the speeds or really velocities because I've given you not only the speed but the direction of them uh, before impact and also on the bottom line their velocities after impact. So if we're to work out the coefficient of restitution E for this first diagram, then E is going to be equal to the speed of separation, first of all. And the speed of separation, we're looking at a positive value. And this one is clearly moving away a lot faster than this one in the same direction though. So the relative speed of separation is going to be 3 minus 2. In other words, 1 meter per second is the relative speed of this particle away from this particle. So that's our speed of separation. Now we need to compare this with the speed of approach. And the approach speeds are here. And we can see that this particle is going a lot faster than this one and it's gaining on it at a rate of 3 meters per second. So that's our relative speed of approach. It's the result of doing 7 take away 4. So what we've got here is 1 divided by 3. One third then is the coefficient of restitution. And just check out that it is somewhere between 0 and 1. Now in the next diagram I've changed the velocities. So for this type of situation, the coefficient of restitution E will be, again, we look at the speed of separation. Now, they're moving in opposite directions this time to one another. 
So therefore, the speed of separation, that relative speed, is going to be 2 plus 1, a total of 3 meters per second. And we compare this then with the speed of approach. Now they're coming towards one another in this situation. So there's going to be a greater relative speed. It's going to be 3 plus 2. OK, so the coefficient of restitution here, E, is going to be 3 over 5, 3 fifths. So I did say I was going to give you this one to try. We've got our two particles approaching one another, 10 meters per second, 8 meters per second in this direction. And then after they collide, the, this one moves off in the opposite direction at 7 meters per second. And this one stays at rest. So what would E be for this one? I'll give you a moment or two to think this one out. Maybe just pause the video for a moment. OK, how did you get on? Well, for this one, the speed of separation first of all. Well, it's going to be 7 minus 0. It's just moving away at 7 meters per second. And then we compare this with the speed of approach. They're moving towards one another, so it's going to be a total of 18 meters per second here. The result of 10 plus 8. So we get a coefficient of restitution of 7 eighteenths. Now, just before we finish this uh, video tutorial, what I would say is, let's just return back to this situation here. If we were working out E, then according to the formula, it would be the speed of separation, which is 2V, because the two particles are moving away from one another, so it would be V plus V, 2V. And we would be dividing by this by the speed of approach. Well, they're moving towards one another now, so the relative velocity there would be V plus V, which would be 2V. And you can see that this comes out to be 1. OK, so that's why E is 1. And for this one, where we've got inelastic bodies, E would be equal to the speed of separation. Well, that's clearly 0. And we're dividing that by the speed of approach. That would be V plus V, 2V. But 0 divided by 2V comes out to be 0, agreeing with what we've got here. All right, so I hope that's given you some understanding of how we go about calculating this value, the coefficient of restitution E. Now in my next video in this series, what we'll be looking at is combining this idea with the equation of the conservation of linear momentum in order to be able to extend the problems that we need to solve on collisions. Okay.